Meaning is what you have to buttress yourself against the tragedy of life. Despite the fact that you're a fragile, damaged, mortal creature, you found something to do that announced itself as worthwhile. That's meaning. It's an instinct. It's a deep, deep instinct. It's maybe the deepest instinct. It's like a form of vision. Meaning tells you when you're in the right place. And the right place is between chaos and order. And those are real places, your hemispheres. Your right hemisphere is roughly evolved, let's say, to deal with things you don't understand. That's chaos. And your left is there to deal with things you do understand. You can't just stay with the things you do understand, because you already understand them. And you can't just stay with what you don't understand, because then you're lost. So you need to be in the middle of those two. And you can tell when you're in the middle, because everything lines up. Everything lines up. Expedience is you do the thing that gets you off the hook the fastest right now. You play that game across time, it doesn't work. It sends you down. Because you're sacrificing the future for the present. Meaning doesn't do that. Meaning says, I'm here where I should be. And you can't tell why. It's just that everything is right. You get this physiological sense. Right place, right time. Follow this meaningful path. That's your buttress against the tragedy that produces resentment and malevolence. Meaning is the antidote to that. That's the fundamental religious truth. Life is suffering. That's true. There's malevolence. That's true. Meaning is the antidote to that. Yes. People say, well, meaning isn't real. It's like, no, that's wrong. It's actually the most real thing. It might even be more real than suffering and evil. Suffering and evil. It's possible. This isn't a metaphysical assumption that I make. And you do feel it. It's, you feel it in your body. It's not just a, a mental thing. It's not an idea. It's a place. Because we're in time and space, right? And a place is a place, you know, three dimensions of, of space, but it's also a time. And when the place and the time are set up properly, you're in the right place. And your brain is telling you that. Your being is telling you that. The purpose of profound religious contemplation, profound philosophical contemplation, is to learn how to be in the right place at the right time, all the time. this line from the Gospel of Thomas, which was discovered in like 1957, and it says, the kingdom of God is spread out before the eyes of men, but men do not see it. And that's kind of what it's referring to. There are times when you're in the right place at the right time, and then you're where you should be. And you're not really trained to notice that, because it isn't something we ever talk about. It's like, you're in the right place at the right time. Okay, why? What did I do right? What did I do? I need to do more of that. do more of that. More of that. So maybe it's only half an hour a week when you first start noticing. And then maybe with three months of practice, you can get it up to like an hour a day. And then maybe you can get it up to four hours a day. And God only knows where you could get it if you, if you keep practicing, you know. You, you, can, you can be there. We don't know what the upper limit of that is. 